Boom, welcome back to Seb Show, everybody. It's your boy Seb's here. And uh, we got today's special guest host again, Rockstar Z, the special Rockstar Z. And we got uh, Gib as well. Um, get to have both these guys in to talk for UFC 220. Did you guys see, first the first thing I want to bring up, did you guys see they they bumped up the fucking price of the pay-per-view five bucks? I heard about that. They can go fuck themselves. <laughs> Did you see that Z? They bumped it up five bucks. Yeah. Fuck I mean, them. Yeah, it's inflation, man. Well, at the start of the year, we had to make some cutbacks. You know. <laughs> guys, yeah, but whatever. Uh, I'd still, I'm still paying whatever the sixty-five for this this card. Um, exactly. They got you to hook. Uh, yeah, you get hooked. It's still paying the sixty-five for That's this. That's a card. robbery. Uh, I don't know about two twenty one, but uh, this card definitely I'm, I'll be paying the the six or the sixty five bucks or whatever. Yeah, two twenty one. I might actually boycott two twenty one, man. It, I, I want to see the main event. Way. I want to see the main event, but man, you got Safarov and Asker on a paper. A- Asker's like, on the main card, man. That's he's probably, you. Bombs. What is that? Yeah. Yeah. Asker doesn't swing bombs. <laughs> this guy. He swings bombs at uh, Volante. At no, Volante? No, no, no. What are you talking oh, about? Safarov. Safarov. Yeah. Is that what you're yeah. talking about? No. He's Safarov horrible, too. He was, yeah. But... Safarov's going to get eaten by Tyson Pedro. Oh, 100%. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, let's start off with this stuff. Uh First up, we got Islam Makachev, guys, going against Gleason Tebow. This is a Twitter mush of the fucking week. Everyone's on Makachev. Um, I'm seeing, like, literally everyone put – I'm seeing people put max bets down on him, too. Like, super confident in Makachev. I just don't see it. Um, this past city for me, man, if Khabib – and everyone's saying, oh, he was a juiced-up Tebow. Like, yeah, the juiced-up Tebow doesn't mean, like – he lost his fundamentals of how to stop a fucking takedown. Like, he still knows how to stop a takedown if he's on the juice or not. He's a big guy regardless. He's going to come into this fight big. Whether he comes in flabby, I don't know. But he's going to come in big. We're not sure how his cardio is going to hold up. And a lot of people are saying his cardio, like, he's always uh, tends to fade and stuff. Man, like, he doesn't fade as hard as I, I thought he, he did back in the day, like, the, guy, the guy's got pretty good cardio for three rounds, decent at least. Um, and if you're going to go that grappling route, we saw it didn't work for Khabib, who l- lost that fight. That was a plain robbery. Uh, definitely lost that fight against Tebow. And then uh, I think he went 0 for 11 on takedowns, which uh, I don't see Makachev getting a takedown here. I don't know how everyone's so confident in his grappling. In this fight, but uh, I I can see him piece him up a little bit if he if he does the kickboxing route. But I'm not sure, man. This is a tough fight for uh, Makachev. Uh, I am picking Makachev to win, but uh, for me, it's it's past city, man. How about you, see? Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's uh, Twitter mush. Uh, basically, people just banking that Tebow is going to show up looking really bad. If that's your angle, I would at least wait to the scale. You know what I mean? If you see him on the scale and he's soft or he's, you know, he looks old, then okay. But as far as like, yeah, banking on him via skill, and people will say, oh, well, you bet on Kang last week doing the USADA fade. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, we saw that Kang was better in every aspect of MMA. Turned out he had he was a bit rusty, but at least we knew the grappling, the scrambles, he was better. Here, you can't say that if Tebow shows up, uh, that Islam is better than him in the grappling department. Um, uh, Islam got swept by Chris Wade. He had trouble with Nick Lentz. He, w- he won those fights. But again, you look at that. His UFC wins. Leo Kuntz, Chris Wade, Nick Lentz, not the best guys. He got knocked out by a southpaw. And Tebow is a southpaw. Tebow is just a well-built, super experienced, you know, fighter. Um of course, he was very physical in the past, so I do get the angle looking to fade him coming off a of USADA suspension. But at the end of the day, I I'm, I can't confidently say that uh, Islam is going to win this fight. I think Tebow could slow it down. Tebow could stuff the takedowns. He could win the grappling exchanges. Like, if grappling is your game, like Tebow's a bad guy to go against unless you're top level. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I I can easily pass this fight. Where are people betting it at? Like, what's the line on, on Islam? He's like minus 
two hundred. Yeah, minus two hundred range. Nah, I don't think even if you lean with Islam based on that Usada thing, I I don't see an edge there. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't lean with him more than the odds suggest. So easy pass for me. Hmm. Uh, I like Islam Machep. I think he has some interesting kicks. Uh, he does a question mark kick actually uh, pretty well. But again, in a fight with Nick Lentz that didn't have to and shouldn't have been uh, that all difficult for him. Um, obviously, he trains at AKA, so you know he's getting a good circle of fighters. But um, with a 14 and 1 record against someone who's 33 and 12, uh, you're just going to have a squeaky and cleaner record. Uh, than someone like that. And Gleason's definitely uh, went through the machine of, you know, of, of fighters being thrown at him. Uh, Tony Ferguson uh, and Abel Trujillo, obviously. Um, you know, these, and these are big fights. And, you know, he's been in the UFC for a lot longer um, since uh, since 2007. So, I mean, you're right. It's it's a big experience gap that he might not be able to uh, to top, and he he works at, off an American Top Team, which should be a good place for him. And um, you know, if it gets into those late rounds, and he's looking a lot like uh, Khabib, I mean, could he really put him into that um, uh, that pressure game and really beat up uh, uh, Gleason Sabal without getting hit himself, right? So uh, I I think it's a down the middle fight. Uh, I think. Maybe Gleason might have a, 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 he doesn't have the exact age advantage that I'd like him to have, but uh, he definitely has an experience and knowledge. And it's if the young can kill the uh, the old lion, right? The other thing you gotta like if you're fading Tebow because you saw that like Islam pop too, you know? Oh, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't exactly fade someone because of. Uh, a drug that a lot of people are on and a lot of, a lot of people are uh, somewhat kind of involved in that during the, uh, during those fights or whatever, uh, whatever business. And I guess we have seen him, I guess we have seen Islam fight since that, since that happened too. Right? Yeah. I mean, the UFC wasn't exactly the cleanest place when, uh, when Tabao was part of it. Right. So yeah. I think a lot of people went in with whatever uh, they were taking during training and, uh, and just said, Hey, hallelujah. Right. They're not testing us for much. So, uh, yeah, but I, I guess I favor Tabao in this fight because of the experience. Zebs, you there? Oh, audio. I think audio dropped from uh, Zebs. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, you're back. There you go. You're back. Uh, what did you want to add? I just was saying, uh, di didn't you uh, bet Tebow? Yes, yeah, I did actually. Because or you're, of the, or, you're about, or you're about to bet Tebow or something? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just was checking. Just was checking. It, based on experience, yeah. I, I mean, the striking of uh, of Makachev, obviously, I like, but I think that it does have a fault if uh, uh, if Khabib's didn't take him down early, right? Yeah. All right, so Gibbs, uh, do you know how many uh, units you're putting on them yet? or not sure. Uh, not yet. I haven't gotten the uh, exact numbers. So. Okay, so he's leaning. He's leaning. Yes. Uh, I'll uh, post it on Twitter if you need it. So. All right, and uh, is I'm leaning as a Makachev uh, Z. Who did you take? Um, I'm leaning Islam, but I like just with the odds. So there's no way I'm betting. Yeah. It, you know. Yeah. Fuck that. Exactly. Uh, okay, so next up we got Enrique Barzola taking on Matt Bissett. Um I'll start this off. Matt Bissett pretty much, he uh, is a hard-headed man, and he's got some great jiu-jitsu. started off doing really well in jiu-jitsu, and, uh, and then he fell in love with his striking as soon as he started knocking people out. And now he's, um, he's kind of in that, like, stage that he doesn't know what what he is and he doesn't know really how to combine uh the jiu-jitsu with the striking yet he doesn't know how to um how to use like seamlessly like enter takedowns with the striking something i see he has some problems on and stuff um other than that the guys he's solid man he got knocked out in his last fight though against kurt hollabaugh uh how about pop for uh for steroids i'm pretty sure though in, in that IV. Part. yeah was it he used an iv yeah oh what the fuck then 
Yeah, it was overturned by Nevada. Okay, yeah, because I know it was a no contest, but yeah. uh, I thought he, I thought he popped for something else. Okay. Every every time they say Papa, you saw it, you just think it's steroids. Uh, it's you against their it, right? rules, right? Yeah, you have, no, you have to look into it though. But uh, so but, uh, beside that fight got overturned. Uh, I, I was just watching tape on him. He's got some nasty knockouts. Uh, don't get me wrong and everything, but the guy is he's a little bit chinny. And then uh, we got an. And, but he's got some great jiu-jitsu, too. Like, I've seen him lock up a heel hook, uh, a triangle choke, like, na- some nasty jiu-jitsu, too, man, but it's locked up. Um, then we got Enrique Barzola. Never really impressed me, Enrique Barzola. Uh, looking for a way to bet him in this fight, seeing that it's short notice and everything. Uh, couldn't, couldn't bet him. He's... Um, a wrestler turned striker himself. He uh, fell in love with the sands a little bit now more, and he's striking a lot more than he used to be. But um, he he's a uh, he's a great wrestler. Uh, I believe he comes from, uh, or is it Benitez that comes from? It's either him or Benitez, right? Z that come from uh, AKA. He comes from uh, ATT. ATT. Mowgli comes from AKA. Yeah, AK, that makes sense. Okay. Okay, so just to even give us talking about before the experience, but I think uh, Barzola holds the experience uh, factor in here. Uh, me and Gibbard just talking before about like uh, Matt Bissett having way more experience than uh, Barzola, way more fights. Not how much does he have? 17, 18 fights, and then Bissett's got like 20. 22. Or, 29 oh, 30 yeah 30 fights oh, okay. okay so um yeah but uh even that barzola has got more ufc time but uh i don't see his wrestling being able to take down map that year uh i see this if he does take him down go for a guillotine or something and locking that up i'm obviously uh leaning with the underdog a little bit here but um I'm a pussy, and I'm scared to bet it. I've got enough bets already, but uh, how about you guys? Go ahead, Gib. Oh, uh, yeah, I think uh, Matt Bissett, after, um, after 2015, I think he just went on a crazy win streak uh, before losing that one on the um, uh, that was overturned. I mean, arguably, the, um, the records of some of them are, are kind of up and down. But uh, I mean, he was finishing guys in the in the, in the first uh, two rounds of the fight, and he's been doing a pretty good job of it. He has a pretty uh, forward style, likes to do a lot of uh, big exchanges, and you know he's got the heel hook, he's got uh, his submission background as well. Um, Enrique Barzola has dealt with uh, with people who like to do that, and he's gone for a li- little bit more of the uh, longer rounds. So um, you know, if you want to bet on a bit of a workhorse who might actually end up getting the um, uh, getting the the best of them in the late. Uh, I would actually say put money on um, uh, Barzola in this one at least. Um, yeah, how about you, Z? I think this is a case where Barzola has the hardware. Like he's got the durability, mm-hmm. the cardio, <clears throat> um, the willingness to to fight more. Um, but I do think Matt Bissett has the skills. The thing is, I don't think he's very durable. He gets hit a lot. He gets dinged up a lot. And uh, when you're fighting a guy like Barzola, who is throwing his hands better nowadays, um, that's scary, right? Um, yes, I think it get you back. I got you. Sorry, guys. Just got it. No problem. Boom. No worries. So, yeah, um, I'm leaning with Barzola just because he's the younger guy. He could be making improvements. Plus, he already has that hardware. He's got that cardio, that strength. Like I said, good wrestling foundation. But, again, I, I think the bookie got this right. So, as far as the betting perspective is concerned, um, I can pass it. I see a lot of people on Barzola. I don't think I saw anybody betting uh, Bissett yet in uh, Bet MMA. So, that's kind of interesting. I think he, he might be a live dog depending on how well he recovered from that knockout on Contender Series. And – what kind of shape he was in when he took the short notice fight on January 11th. Um, all that being said, like, like I said, skills go to Bissett, um, hardware goes to Barzola. I'll lean with the, the hardware, but uh, passing from a bet. Yeah, me as well. Um, next up, we got 
Julio Arce taking on Dan. Uh, I don't know how to say his last name. Is it Iggy? Ige. 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 Okay, Dan Ige. Should have got that they, from they had a, the million times they said it on fucking um, Snoopcast. They had a problem with it, actually. T- I think they kept calling him Ike, right? Oh, they Snoop- were calling him Iggy. Yeah, yeah Iggy. Sorry. Iggy. Iggy. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, I watched. Uh, you have to watch all your the tape for the Contender series in the Snoop Snoopcast. Oh man. Yeah. Awesome. No, it's it's way better in the Snoopcast, man. That was like about- <laughs> You're talking about this on uh, uh, over the Twitter. I, I've actually grown to enjoy Snoop, and I, I think he disses the fighters a little too much. Uh, he's, but he's I mean, keeping it real. He's, he's hilarious. Ball, you know? he's I, absolutely I like hilarious. when he does it. I like when he fucking sings lullabies <laughs> and shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like. I just like the the fresh perspective. You know, it's not it's not a guy who's kind of seen everything. As he's like, whoa, what's this? Whoa, what's that? And yeah. it's nice that he's with Uriah because Uriah can say, oh, look, he's got to try to do this or that. And he's, he's picking up on oh, stuff. Too, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's like, a, I, yo, he, he, it's sick to watch him grow as like an MMA fan. Yeah. Well, sure. <laughs> it's jokes. I can't wait no. to watch him again <laughs> in the summertime. But, uh, yeah, next up is is RSA versus uh, Ige. And um, I got 3.52 units on RSA at one, 141, minus 141 to win 2.5 units. Um, the guy's got some crisp boxing, comes from Golden Gloves uh, background, real, real crisp boxing. Uh, I think he was a prof- has a professional boxing record as well. And he did uh, compete in glory not too long ago and got a second round TKO. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy is a serious striker and he, uh, I, he keeps his left hand super tight to his hip, ready to fire that left cross uh, or, or the left hook. Um, and uh, sets up with it really well. He's, I believe he stands uh, stands southpaw, yeah. 100%. And, yeah, and uh, he, he can mix it up in whatever, but he, he mainly stands southpaw. But um, his, uh, uh, I like the damage he puts when he's using this pressure against somebody against the cage. He's always, he's always pressing forward. He's got good cardio. He can go all three rounds. I've seen him go five. I no, I haven't seen him go five. I've seen him go three. Actually, Ring of Combat's only three championship rounds. Um, I've seen him beat the shit out of people that I've trained with, like Michael Imperato. Literally beat the shit out of uh, him. And uh, uh, Michael's no joke, man. Imperato's a serious. Uh, was a serious threat, man. He's only lost to the uh, top to, to to top to top fighters. You know, Xavier Louis and. Uh, Julio Arce, so t- two top guys right there. So uh, Arce and Arce put a beat down on him. His Arce's only two losses are against Brian Kelleher, where he dove into a, a guillotine, I believe, and uh, he got uh, decisioned. And the other one, never been, uh, never been, uh, like finished with strikes or uh, stopped with strikes at least. Um, I just like the way this guy uh, uses his leg kicks and his, his punches to set up wherever he needs against the cage. He doesn't go for too many takedowns, and his takedown defense is good. He comes from that Tiger Shulman camp with Jimmy Rivera and Burgos and all those guys, Lyman Good, Louis Gadno, and he's a serious force, man. I, I love <coughs> I love the guys out of those camps, out of that camp at least. Um, very well prepared, uh, good boxers. Um and it's no, it's no joke with him as well. He, he, like I'm saying, his boxing is very crisp, man. And I think with, uh, with Ige here, he's a legit black belt. If this guy gets your back, you're pretty much done. Uh, he sinks in those, those body hooks, and uh, he, he just beats you to a pulp. He's very strong for a featherweight. Um. I see that he gasses a little bit towards the end of his fights or in the middle. If he's striking, uh, uh, just going for like, if he goes for like more than two or three takedowns, he starts, uh, he starts gassing a little bit, uh, as we saw in the contender series. And, uh, in that fight, it showed me a lot. It showed, it showed me his durability as well to like, uh, to get that, uh, the choke at the end after that crazy fight. And uh, he de- he definitely dominated Louis Gomez in that fight, but 
Uh, if I have to go, and I think this fight's going to play standing most most of the time, I have to lean with Julio Arce here, man. Julio Arce's boxing's no joke, and I think he's going to light up uh, Danny Ike here. He's going to get him gas, break him with pressure, light him up. Uh, Z, how about you? I was looking hard at betting uh, Dan Ige in this fight because he's a very serviceable guy, like you said, BJJ Black Belt. And one thing I noticed about his game specifically is if he gets a guy up against the fence, he'll get one hook in. And instead of uh, hanging out there and letting the guy turn into you standing or uh, jumping to the back, what he does is he likes to drag guys down. And I really like that. Um, The problem is guys end up on top of you. And if they turn into you now, they're in your guard. But one thing that Dan did really well in his fight with – uh, Ronaldo uh, Augusto, who is a Pan Am Nogi champ, is he trapped the far arm. So he grabbed uh, his opponent's left hand, wrist with his own left hand around his back, which prevented him from turning in. So he's got sneaky stuff like that. Definitely no joke on the ground. Um, and I like I like his striking, actually. He throws a really crisp, snappy right hand, gets his head off the center line. We saw him do that versus Luis Gomez, who is a good striker out of Cuba. Um, but all that being said, what ultimately is making me pass is that Julio Arce is a very crisp striker. He's southpaw. And that's important because uh, Dan Ige, he holds his right hand low, like it's tight to his body, but it's not up, uh, up near his face. It's always like down below his chin. Um, that's why he can fire it so fast. But the, the left cross of Julio Arce is going to give him a lot of trouble if he doesn't have his hand up in the way, you know, shots coming down the pipe on the left side are going to hurt him. Um, you said he tends to gas, but I would say he just tends to uh, pace himself very well. And that's something he's done in all his fights going all the way back to his amateur days. Uh, just a very well, like I said, serviceable everywhere, strong, hits hard, durable. I think good cardio and energy management skills. Um, but ultimately, that opening down the pipe, the fact that Julio Arce is training with the likes of Shane Burgos, Jimmy Rivera, guys who are getting ready for fights recently. I think he's in shape. And Julio Arce is no longer cutting to 135, 35. I yeah, he's mm-hmm. that's a big yeah, thing, too, I forgot to yeah, mention. A, exactly. So he can take short-notice fights easier. Um, but I, I don't know about betting on Arce because I don't – like like I said, Ige is tough, man. He's going to be there. He's well-rounded. He has good skills everywhere. He throws hard. Um, he lists his favorite strike as the jab, which I found surprising because I didn't notice him using a lot of jabs. Um, but he he says he likes that to set up other shit. So he is mindful in there. He is thinking about fainting. He's thinking about jabbing to set up the big shots. Um, and I honestly, I like his game overall. I do. But the striking is very sharp from Julio Arce. And he comes from a good camp. So ultimately, I, I'm probably going to pass unless this line gets crazy. But mm-hmm. where it's at now... I would lean with Ige, but I, I'm not going to pull the trigger yet. Let's let's sit back for this one and see what these guys have to offer. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think Ige definitely has a pretty good chance stand up. Uh, he has great boxing, uh, like you were saying, and it seems to be carrying him around. Um, the submissions that he that he can get are great when he when he does get them. Um, he's got a uh, uh, he's got a, got a Kimura and a, and a very technical rear naked choke in his past fights. Uh, Brian Kelleher was one of the only people to actually beat him uh, twice, in fact, once. That's and, RSA. Uh, that's RSA. Oh, sorry, uh, Brian Kelleher. Uh, yeah, sorry. But I think Danny's boxing is at least decent enough to, to stand with him and, uh, you know, be somewhat uh, contestable. Uh, Julio Arce, I really like his style. Um, again, I just want to go back to that fight, that Brian Keller fight. Uh, he did lose uh, once to a decision, and the second time was a submission. Uh, it wasn't it didn't go very very well after that, but uh, he did win uh, five straight. So he's been doing good since, and I like that southpaw style he has. Keeps the uh, uh, the left hand tucked in really nice. Great teeps. Uh, he knows his good kickboxing distance and where to stay if he wants to get the decision, just based off of staying on the outside and landing his big long strikes. Um, and he can hit hard when guys come in. Uh, I mean, he, he beat a very tough Peter Pettis who uh, would not stop rushing him. And Peter Pettis got lucky with a few of his strikes and really did find the button on Julio. But Julio's technical uh, strategy and just his overall um, uh uh, overall skills were able to bring him into the second round and knock out a, a very tough opponent. 
Uh, Dan Ig, again, going back uh, going back to that submission, he got it was a tough fight for him. So I think it's going to be a good fight. But I do give it uh, Julio Arce uh, because he really only lost to one person. Um, very similar to, to Dan, if maybe um, – if maybe uh, one of his re- one of his guys got the rematch on him, so we'll see what happens. But uh, I got yeah, one thing I want to. This. Sorry, you brought up a good point about uh, his show on Contender Series, uh, Petty's. That was a very interesting fight because you clearly saw that Arce was the more fundamentally sound fighter, and that carried him over into the second round, where mm-hmm. he kind of survived the early storm, where you had a more athletic, long, unorthodox guy. Um, but once that guy gets tired, it's it's all about your fundamentals, right? And that's yes. where he really. He, he shined in the, in the second round. And another thing I want to say about Tiger Shulman guys is they have really good striking, but I've noticed that they all talk about taking um, different style of fights. Like they'll take a kickboxing fight. They'll take a boxing fight. They'll take, yeah. they'll, they'll do a, a grappling, grappling match, uh, wrestling yeah. like there. So I really like that they compete in all the, the different aspects of MMA. That's something that uh, mighty mouse talks about when he was coming up. He's like, Different weekend, I would have to go fight a guy a different skill set. So you really kind of become well rounded in each discipline, you know, specifically on its own, yeah. and then you can blend them together. So I, I like that about that camp. Uh, something else I like is their fucking corner work. I think they have some of the best yes. corner work in the game. Um, yeah. if you see in that art, shape too. yeah, man, uh, they get their boys in shape exactly. And our our say is, um, if you see how just how gamey is in that, uh, Fight against Petty's like uh, Tiger Shulman. Yeah, uh, I I forgot w- which one of the brothers, but we're, we're telling him, uh, "Hey man, you lost this round." Uh, th- like he he he's like he just like, yeah. he's like yeah you got to go. He just like he just likes to hit you. He just want to get hit. He's scared. And then like and then like uh, who actually looked at him? He's like yeah. He starts smiling. He's like, let's get him. Let's get him in the yeah. second. Let's get him in the second. And he this goes kid, out there and he goes fire. to get him, man. Yeah, yeah. man. And it's a being, great fight. Being a uh, two division champ, like this kid for a long time, for his like since almost his career started. I think he was a champ at four and oh. And like uh a bantamweight uh, champ, and then like he became the featherweight champ afterwards after he lost to Brian Kelly. Uh, but he's he's no joke, man. Uh I'm, I'm no, all in right. on I'm all in on RC. I'm all in on him. Yeah, I, lo- I love the, this kid. I think this is his time to shine. Uh, next up, yeah, all right. Next, <laughs> next up, we got uh, Dustin Ortiz taking on Alexander the Cannibal Pantoja. Is he? I'll let you take this one, man. Uh so this. Hold on. Let me let me bring it up. <laughs> I think the value was on Dustin Ortiz early, honestly. I know you took Pantoja, but when yeah. I go back and I watch it, man, I mean, Dustin Ortiz, again, similar to Ige, just very serviceable everywhere. He's got a lot of experience, wrestling background. His hands have come a long way. He's a dude who's always in shape. And uh, Pantoja, he's got sick jujitsu, right? Very, very good. Willingness to, to strike and walk forward and exchange. But realistically, I mean, he hasn't beaten anybody – on the level of uh, of Ortiz, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, uh, like, I believe so too. Like other than like, well, you can say what you want about Brandon Moreno, but he beat him in the in the tough house, you know. So I'm not sure if that counts. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. And and uh, and Moreno did beat Ortiz, right? So yeah, yeah. there's the yeah. MMA math for you. But yeah. let's be real, Ortiz was whooping Moreno's ass before. Uh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah he locked that right? submission up really. Really yeah. quickly. So this, I mean, this one, I, I hate, I hate coming on these shows and saying like, oh, it's going to be a good scrap, uh, easy pass. But honestly, that's how I feel about it. I don't know which way it's going to go. I don't know if Alex is going to get off on his strikes because Ortiz has been making good improvements with his hands recently, and he's always in shape. Oh, I um, hope he stands he, with him. But or, Ortiz can't, re- Ortiz can't really take him down because then he's in that hot lava, right? Yeah. So yeah. like I, I get I get the angle you're playing where it's like you're saying Pantoja is the better striker, so he's, he's better win everywhere in my down, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe not the wrestling, but it's kind of a moot yeah. point because yeah. As soon as he takes him down, like you're saying, he's in hot lava. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I mean, I I kind of get it, but with Pantoja being the favorite, that surprised me. I thought he would open as the dog, and then I'd have to really look at it. But 
Um, where the line's at now, I can I can just pass the fight. But I'll pick um, I'll pick Pantoja because I do think he's the more skilled fighter overall. But I mean, Ortiz always comes correct, so mm. I, I think Pantoja has his hands full. I I agree, man. I think Pantoja does have his hands full, especially. I think if he does uh, want to wrestle, I think it'll give him problems for a little bit. So I've seen it before, give um, Pantoja some problems, but he usually finds a way when you when you wrestle with him. Usually finds a way to sneak out a submission. So I'm not sure yeah. if, if Dustin Ortiz is ready for that or if he even watched a video on that. But uh, he he usually sneaks up submissions when you're wrestling with him. Something I picked up on, especially in that. Uh, Demacio Page fight. If you watch that one, uh, Demacio Page pretty much ragdolled him for two rounds um, on the floor, and he locked up a submit. He locked up a triangle and it had him tap it by the second. And it was just like his durability is he never quits. <clears throat> Stand up wise, I think he's way better than Dos Ortiz. I think he's got a really mean leg kick and. Uh, Sets up a one-two real nice as well. Uh, yeah, now with the line, now with the line closing in, I'll I'll take a second look at that honestly because when yeah, you it's like, it, like it's it's like minus Pantoja. something right now. It's it's real nice line right now. I wish I fucking waited a bit. Because really, like losing that two-round decision in the house, okay, that doesn't really count. Early loss to Formiga, okay, and then a loss in 08. So like, like he doesn't lose fights, and and it. You, it's evident when you see him fight because he's just always willing to fight. You know, he, he'll press yeah. forward, he'll throw, he'll, he doesn't mind getting hit. He's got that wicked ground game. So I do see where you're coming from. Yeah, for sure. And like um, the the guy that gave him a lot of trouble is Hermoso Oki or whatever his name is from Deep. That guy's no joke, man. He's such a serious wrestler and grappler. That's the one guy who gave him trouble in the house. He's like one of the best grapplers. I, like he was gonna give DJ problems if he won the if he mm. won the show, yeah. yeah. He was oh he was gonna give him problems at least in the scrambles and stuff, man. He was he was gonna give him some something. But uh, for him to Pantoja, he beat Eric Shelton. Yeah, that's weird. Hold yeah. on, I didn't even he didn't even go to UFC. That the the, uh, the Japanese cat and he lost in yeah. the, in, a, in the in finals the third round. To yeah, Elliot. that's so yeah. weird, right? Why did yeah, he get yeah. shot? Yeah, I wonder why. He, uh, Dana probably thought he was boring or something with his style. I saw something. Like, it had to be something like that because, like, the guy didn't strike. He was always he was like uh, blanketing people, but fuck yeah, he, but he, he was so effective. And look at his losses too: Horiguchi and and Eduardo Dantes, like legit guys. Oh, two legit guys. Yeah, those I'll, are I'll legit. At, losses. I'll, I'll honestly give Pantoja a second look. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Do it for me again, <laughs> just like you did I last think, week for for I the bullet last time, though. Yeah. Vola. Oh my goodness. If anyone's watching, sorry if you took for Vola because of me, man. <laughs> his willingness. He's a wild to, dude. Yeah, he's too wild for me. I can't pick mm. him anymore. He he doesn't even want to use his. He's like a Gaethje. He doesn't want to use his wrestling. Why the fuck? Like Gaethje's a Division One All American. Doesn't want to use his wrestling for no. Hey, I don't want to use it. I just want to fucking punch face. More fun to <laughs> more fun to strike, man. Uh, some guys can't like melt it into like their wrestling. Game. What's guess, that, kid? I guess some people can't melt it into their wrestling, so it's it's as good, right? Because you never want to wrestle, and then all of a sudden the guy's wrestling better than you. Yeah, I guess so. even at D one level, you can still get out wrestled though those one or two times. And, like, if you're not already standing, you're just not in a good position to really give and take, right? I think it's more of a tactical thing, though. It's these guys who to. wrestled and then never were able to punch people. Uh, and then they, yeah. they get into MMA and they like punching people. Like, <laughs> yeah, punching. yeah. No kidding. But where I'm going, pretty much, I didn't even say my bet. Three units spent total minus 147 to win 2.04 units. Um. I just think he's better everywhere. Like mm -hmm. uh, Z was saying, is that's where I think he's he's better everywhere. I think he's the better striker than Ortiz. And if it goes to the ground, I think he can cinch up a submission. I think uh, we, we like, and he can win a decision as well. Yeah, like, easily with uh, outstriking Dustin Ortiz on the feet, and uh, his 
I've seen him in Shoot the Box in his – or not Shoot the Box, Shoot the Brazil. And uh, he's he's got some serious take on defense too. It's only against like superb, superb grapplers. And I know that's not – he's no joke. So uh, he's a pretty good grappler. So he might have his hands full. But for the uh, – at minus 147, I just wanted a three for two kind of deal. So I, I got three units, but zero to win two. And uh, the line even got better now. So I, I'd advise everyone to take a look at that. I think it's a, it's a, it's going to be a tough fight, but I see him grand order decision 100%. Uh, how about you, Gib? Well, uh, I like Dustin Ortiz. Uh, he, he really ran through uh, Hector Sandoval, who kind of got uh, uh, handed up to him, I guess. But I didn't think, for me, 15 seconds was much of a, uh, a fight. So I don't really know about that one. Um, but I uh, I did enjoy his uh, his fights with um, uh, with. Um, Sorry, Hector. Uh, sorry, uh, Zach. Uh, Zach Mikovsky, because they just went that way where it was they were both exchanging, and you kind of got to see what each one uh, each one had. Uh, he's got a brown belt in jujitsu, and he can have a few tough times. And in that fight, they trade a few submissions. Uh, you see a lot of good escapes, and uh, even getting a, a body triangle when um, Mikovsky went for a pretty sneaky heel hook. After that, getting out of it, uh, getting out of, and then going into a one arm choke. It, it really does kind of link in when he when he sits down and does jujitsu with people. You get to see a lot of his good wrestling. Um, his dirty boxing might not be enough to uh, to really beat up uh, Alexandria Pantoja, but I think that the spots where Alex, uh, Alexandria Pantoja can lose is he's a bit of a taunter, and in a lot of his fights, he tends to taunt, tends to kind of like, yo, let's go, man. Or, or brings his he hands his down. Too. Yeah, that. yeah, he gets very cocky, and I think that that can put pressure on you in a negative way, uh, in some spots. And I wouldn't want to do that to a guy who can end somebody in 15 seconds. It's just not. Yeah, but, but at least to me, Ortiz, not, how many yeah. knockouts does Ortiz have like that? You're right. Yeah, that's true. But I, I thought that the Eric uh, Shelton fight was a bit of warfare, and and you know a lot of rogue punches in that one. Uh, so. I guess we'll have to see. I, I do like this fight. I think it's going to be uh, uh, someone's can, going. If you can grind out the split decision, I love those type of fighters. Yeah, yeah. If you can grind out split decisions, I love you. So Pantoja is a fighter I uh, yeah. I, I side with. Those, those weasels. Win. I love betting on the weasels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, and I think with that hands-down style, when you're winning rounds, you look a lot better. If, if you have that, you know, hand down, you're jabbing, and, you know, you might be taking a few shots, but – you're generally um, out uh, athleting the person. You're kind of getting the spots before him, landing, laughing at him. Uh, so this is going to be a good fight, I think. Uh, but I, I actually might give it to uh, Dustin Ortiz to maybe turn it around. And uh, for the split second that maybe Pantosha takes for granted, he could uh, take advantage and, and, and even end it early, right? I'm kind of going on a hunch here, but uh, – yeah, and I agree with you guys on the Brandon Marino fight because he was winning it until the uh, the second round choke ended up happening. Maybe if Pantoja can wrap up one of those. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Um, so next up we got oh, Saba Hamasi versus Abdul Razak Al Hassan. Uh, Gib, I'll let you to start up on this one, man. I, I like the first one. I mean, I I was wait as soon as uh, as soon as you told me that this uh, this card would have it, I was like, well, I'm sold already. Uh, this is an undercard fight that happened. Um, uh, what card was that one? Uh, that was uh, Gustafson, right? No, two. Yeah, eight, two or no, um, Holloway. Sorry. Um, yeah. And uh, and that one, you you kind of saw uh, Razak have to put a guy on the fence and really throw bombs, and he got hit. It wobbled. Uh, I think that he had Hamasi though. Uh, his head was down, and it didn't seem like uh, he was. It was going to get any better. I do think it was a really uh, early stoppage. It could have went to the bell, but I think uh, Razak would have won that fight. So if you if you're betting, I put money on Razak. But if you like a comeback story, and if you want to maybe see somebody who's confident and thinks he has uh, Razak's number, I mean, I think Hamasi definitely has confidence going into this one because he's like, you know what, I, I think I won that one. I, I think I, I traded with him a few times and I could have kept going. 
And I think it's that tough mentality that could even bring this into a, a, a late fight where sloppiness kind of gives uh, Hamasi the round. So I don't think anything can happen here, but uh, I definitely like Razak in this one. Can't hear you, Sebs. I'll go, though. Here we go. So I had... Um, Boom. Perfect. The first time this fight was uh, made, I took uh, Razak al-Hassan. I forget what line I got. I think it was around minus 200 again. Um, but I thought that Saba showed a lot of improvements. Now, he had taken yeah. some time off. He's at a good camp. So I thought that was a possibility. And I honestly think he showed that in the first fight. He just seemed uh, more settled in, more solid in his combinations. Um, and so, honestly, I feel like I got away with something the first fight. You know, like I feel like mm -hmm. I bet on Razak. He didn't really get the finish. It was looking kind of sketchy, but I cashed the bet. So as far as this fight this time around, I'm passing. Like, I don't need to double down on Razak. But by the same token, I'm not going to trust Homasi because my read is still that Razak can finish him. Uh, super explosive guy, judo background. We know the deal with Razak al-Hassan. Saba Homasi, though, um, good striker. He's game opponent. Uh, he clearly wanted to keep fighting. You know, clearly a bad stoppage. I can admit it for sure. Um but yeah, I'll take I'll take Razak to knock him out again. But as far as bets concerned, I already made my money on this fight, so I'm passing mm -hmm. this time. Smart man, but uh, for me, I'm I'm doubling down on Razak. Yeah, yeah, I have to, I have to. I saw how oh, the fight I, went I the first too. time. I saw how the fight went the first time, and if it went a little bit longer, five more seconds, fight would have been over. Um, it was maybe bad, I don't know about it that. It was man. a bad stoppage, but if he dropped down, gave him. Two of those. He would have been <laughs> Two of those. <laughs> but uh, even even uh, let's say it it didn't stop is, there. My thing is, I, I bet Razak. Let me let me. What was the line the first time around? Was it the same line? Or am I, I don't even crazy? remember. Uh, I'm pretty sure Razak was uh, uh was a uh, like minus one eighty. I think I got him. So I feel like Saba's better now. I think I've seen him be better in the cage. Like, he, show, he showed me improvements, and I'm getting the same line, so why am I going to still bet it, you know? But, go on. Sorry, go ahead. How no, much I, more does Hamasi get? Sorry? How, how much more is it if you bet Hamasi right now? Oh, uh, it's not that much Hamasi's more. Oh. Plus 170. They don't, they don't have that in the archive, though. It's strange. What? The fight? The first fight, yeah. If you go to their, like... I, I found it. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's on Sabbath. It's not on Zabbath. <clears throat> Yeah, I think it's on Sabas. That's weird. So the line's a bit better this time around. All right, that makes sense. For for Razak, it's a bit better this time. For Is Razak. it? What yeah. was the line the first time? It opened minus 265 <laughs> and it closed between like minus 295 to 245. That's not bad. So I took him at... I got about, minus 200. Yeah. I got him at, You know, same thing for the first fight. My thoughts didn't change. He's better everywhere, better striker, better grappler because of the judo background and whatnot. All right, I, I agree. Saba Hamasi did look come in, look improved, maybe sweat a little. Uh, but man, uh, I didn't think that was gonna last too long. Uh, like what? How, till how long was that gonna last? Till uh, Razak uh, knocked him out, and if he didn't knock him out. Yeah, like he, he was he was scoring points but just advancing and landing bombs just like pretty much showing the judges he's the one in the in command. So I have to I have to go with Rizak all day here. I think this is his coming out party in the UFC. I think he's gonna finally like I know that uh Charlie Ward knockout was was uh nice, but I think he makes an impact here and he shows like he's got some skills. Um like I'm, I'm saying, so I got Rizak all day. I put four units on him at um, minus one nine one ninety nine to win two point zero one units, and pretty fucking confident in that one. Uh, how about you, Mister Gibb? Oh, I already said uh, I got Rizak after that for after the first one. Oh, after the first I, one. I thought that Hamasi could come back if it gets like a a tough, you know, rocky moment. But uh, I mean, it didn't look very good for him the first time. Uh, Maybe he needed the training camp and, uh, and an extra round, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, it looks like um, like it looked like the first fight. Like I agree, it was a bad stoppage, 
But like Z, honestly, you think he would he would have survived like a minute longer in that corner with Razak like landing bombs on him? That's it depends hard. how it goes though, right? We haven't we didn't see it. Yeah, we'll never know. But yeah, you never I know because he could have been would, done after that flurry, him. right? That's what I'm. I'm not betting on Saba. I'm just I'm just saying. I know. I feel like I already made money on this matchup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I think I I, I, I feel like, like I gotta double down and make more money right. off them. I, I wish you the best of luck, man. No, it's true. Yeah. Going back to the drawing board could be the uh, the kryptonite, right, for a lot of people. Yeah, I agree. But um, okay, so we, we all have Razak here, yep. and but I'm the only one betting him, I believe. Um, next up is. Uh, Kyle Botchniak, Jobniak versus uh, Brandon Davis. And uh, to me, bro, Botchniak's fucking 0 3 in the UFC. He didn't win against Barzola. That was another robbery in Boston. Um, Brandon Davis is like a mean little Jason Knight, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, he's actually the same same uh, weight as Jason Knight. He just looks a little bit smaller. I don't know why. But he's Jason Knight's actual striking coach. Um, at, at Alan Belcher's. And uh, so he, he's a legit striker. He puts together combinations pretty seamlessly, and uh, his Muay Thai is nothing, like, nothing to joke around about, man. The guy's serious, and he's always pressing forward. He gets in these gritty fights, and he's always... Uh, I love the forward pressure that like he brings because it, it makes people fight off their back foot where they're not comfortable, and Bochanak doesn't seem like he's comfortable fighting off his back foot. Uh, so I, I took Brandon Davis here. I took the shot on him at uh, I put two and a half units on him at um sorry let me get this real quick two and a half units at minus one twelve to win two point two three units and um, I'm pretty confident in that. How about you, Z? You got all kinds of bets, eh, Sam? Right oh, the main uh, card. Wait till I get to the main card. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I just. I just think this is a scrap. Like I hate again. I hate saying that, but like, yeah, I I'll take I'll take um, Brandon Davis. I don't think Bokniak's anything special. I don't think he has any lethal skill set. Um, he moves around a lot, but it's kind of ineffective. Um, he's game though. I'll give him that. Bokniak is game, and he can squeak stuff, right? Like you said, you like the weasels. I agree that Barzola beat him, but Kyle was able to get the decision just yeah. based on pure nothing movement and pitter patter stuff. I had him in that fight actually because. Um, I didn't think that uh, Barzola's striking was that good, but he had made improvements camp to camp there. Um, mm-hmm. Regardless, I'll, yeah, I'll take I'll take uh, Brandon Davis, but uh, for me, again, a scrappy fight, I can sit back and pass. The yep. art of the pass. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to pass, but not here. Get right. up with I, you again. Good luck. Oh, you you win I money when you win money when you don't lose, right? Yeah. Um, but I, uh, I thought about Kyle Bosniak for a while. Uh, he was coming off of that split. Uh, yeah, didn't look like a split. Jeremy Kennedy fight, he didn't like grappling with him. Um, uh, it it kind of turned into uh, uh, one of those. And he had some moments in it, I think, uh, but obviously there, there were a lot of problems. Um, he, he tends to do tends to lock up a submission if he can get it. Um, I hasn't, I mean, he did one of late recently. Uh, so, I mean, he's a little off and on, right? I mean, those last three fights weren't very good. They all went three rounds, kind of questionable. Uh, you kind of already see his, uh, what he's bad at. Uh, Brandon Davis is looking super tough. I like that Austin Arnett fight, man. Uh, he Austin ate Arnett. so many shots in that fight. Too. Austin Arnett's like, a tough fighter, though. I mean, he's got a fucking chin. That Arnett, go, uh, yeah. Austin Arnett, if you're going to stand with him, man, there, there is a, a number of punches you're going to take. And I guess Brandon Davis's number was just a little too high that day. But it, it seems like the uh, the means to an end for him to, uh, yeah. to go up against, right? And uh, in there, right? a lot of forward pressure that you have to work for. And again, it's getting you right, right down the middle, open in the firing range. Uh, but I think that that's why he beats uh, Bos- uh, Bosniak today, because that's who he seems to have trouble when guys jump in on him, when guys even take him down, uh, you know. Crowd him. Yes, exactly. He doesn't like the pressure. He wants to move on his own time. Yeah, that's a good, good point. Yeah, I believe so. 
So I got Brandon Davis, and I will be putting money. Uh, I'll let everyone know on Twitter. Yeah, exactly. Do you track? Do you track your bets? Bet MMA. No, this will be the first one. Yeah, this is the first oh. event for him. So yeah, we'll see what happens. I told him to put his money where his mouth is because oh, we yeah. have a disagreement about the main I'm, event. I'm an underdog guy. I'll be the tiebreaker then. All right. All right. The uh, usual. Okay, so next up we have we entered the main card. We got uh with a banger. With a banger, honestly. This is beautiful. TZ, fight. TZ, these are the ones that you fucking pass. These are the ones that you sit down and you pass. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you bet on these scrubs making their debut? Yeah, I love you so much. Yeah. <laughs> you have to bet on the scrubs sometimes. <laughs> they're they're not scrubs, so they're killers. They're gonna no, no, no. I mean, they have, they have a foot in the door, right? They're going to kill it. They're going to all kill it. But uh, we got Tom Minas Almeida here uh, versus Robbie Fonch. And um, this, is a, this is a fucking big fight. I was uh, I was honestly leaning Rob Font when I was taping this. I was even telling you I was leaning Rob Font. I thought his striking looked good enough to give uh, Almeida problems. And... Um, like Almeida does his best work inside the pockets. He's right with that. I know he's gonna say that. So he does mm-hmm. his best work in this inside the pocket. Um, but fucking something about uh, Rob Font. Like he, the, he, this is the first fight in a while too that he actually doesn't have the reach advantage. I believe. I think Thomas has the reach advantage. I think Thomas is like seventy two and a half. I've seen it listed all over the place. I've seen it 70 and a half, 71 and a half, 73 and a half. So I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. I saw them at the face offs. It's very, their frames are very comparable. Okay. So well, apparently Rob Fawn is about an inch taller. They're both about the same height, though. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're very similar. Yeah. And I was looking for the, after I was looking to bet Thomas, I watched all of Thomas's UFC fights and one of his, uh, his older fights too, and I still couldn't bet Thomas. I, it's just something about this fight that I, it makes me just want to pass, man. And I, like one one thing is Thomas's chin. I'm not sure where it is. I got dropped a couple of times in that Jimmy Rivera fight. Been dropped by Brad Pickett. He's been dropped. He's been dropped by Cody Garbrandt. He's been dropped all kinds. And then we got Robbie Fonch who did the the dance, the chicken dance against Pedro Munoz again in his last fight. So he, I'm not sure about his chin as well. This is a this is gonna be a war. I think somebody's going down, and um, I'm I'm leaning Rob Font, but uh, yeah, I think Rob Font gets this done by decision here. I think he outpoints him with some jabs, some jabbers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how about you, Z? What do you got, bud? All right, I'll, all right, I'll, I'll talk about Rob Font first because I do see where you can, I see what you're seeing. Like I know why people would think Rob Font's gonna have success here, and he, he very well might. Um, one thing that gives traditional Thai guys a lot of problems is straight shots down the pipe or loopy shots. Just basically, like if you have heavy hands and you can throw correctly, that gives guys problems. So Rob Font has a lot of tools that can hurt uh, Almeida. Like I said, the straight uh, shots down the pipe, the, the one two. Uh, loopy hooks, knees up the middle, front kicks up the middle. Um, and he's he's very good. You know, he's a very good boxer. But when I look at the tape and when I watch the fights chronologically, what I've noticed about Almeida is he addresses the issues. Um, he's moving his head more nowadays. He's lighter on his feet nowadays. That's why he got caught in the Cody fight is because Cody hurt him. And instead of being smart and evading, he then wanted to get it back right away. And that's what got him knocked out. Um, but in this fight... What I see happening is Almeida is going to be able to, to uh, prod him, like to just to poke him with inside leg kicks very often early because Rob's so heavy on that lead leg. And then he's going to be able to, to, to get away. So what that's going to do is it's going to make Rob chase, Rob overextend. And when he does that, he's going to get countered. I think Almeida is the fastest guy Rob Font has fought. Um, and when he counters him and when Almeida starts getting Rob on the back foot, I don't think Rob can recover. You know what I mean? Because... Uh, he hasn't shown a very good ability to fight on the back foot. And because Almeida pressures in with such tight combinations, it strings many strikes together, whereas Rob likes to pick and poke from the outside. I say pick and poke, but he throws hard. Don't get me wrong. 
Um, but he likes more like one, one, two, you know, uppercut type exchanges, whereas Almeida finds more success in the chaos. Now, about their fights or, or where they're at in their career, Rob's already 30. I think he's a fully developed fighter. I don't think he's going to be making big leaps in his game. Whereas Thomas Almeida at this point is 26. He's fought, he's lost to top three, top five level competition in Cody Garbrandt and in uh, Jimmy Rivera. Whereas Font's losing to more top 10 guys. That's some MMA math. So like that could mean nothing. I'm not putting a lot of stock into that specifically. But as far as their career development, for this camp, Thomas Almeida went to Phuket top team. He's been sparring with uh, Lerd Zilla, who's one of the best strikers uh, alive right now. So I really like that about a young guy moving camp and seeking knowledge, trying to get better. Um, I, I just, I really like that look for him. And like I said, I, I think you get an extremely dynamic uh, striker in Thomas Almeida, who's going to use all eight weapons of Muay Thai, whereas Rob's primarily a boxer. So I think there's more openings for Almeida. I think he's faster than Rob Font. And I think if he starts moving forward, he's going to have enough success to finish the fight. Whereas if Rob Font hurts Almeida, we've seen many times Almeida get hurt and recover. The other thing you got to you gotta know too is like Thomas Almeida's fight with Jimmy uh, Rivera was very interesting because Jimmy's so compact. I think it took away the body shots. He couldn't really reach that low down to the body. But he, the body shots are open for him here. And Rob Font does not react well to body shots. Um, the other thing is, in that Jimmy Rivera fight, one of the judges had it 30-26. And although I, I understand that scorecard, um, and I do give Jimmy the, the, the first round 10-8, that's a very competitive 30-26. The way I saw the fight, honestly, uh, Jimmy gets a 10-8 in the first because he dropped him multiple times, I believe three yeah. times clean. But again, Almeida recovered. And then he drops him again early in the second. And you think, oh, this is Jimmy all day. But then around the midway point in the fight, Thomas turns it around, he drops Jimmy, and he wins the latter half of that second round. And in my opinion, mm. he won the third round as well. Um, one of the judges did have it 29-28 uh, for Jimmy, but I, I saw Thomas doing a lot of uh, things well later in the fight against one of the best fighters in the world. Same with the Cody Garbrandt fight. Like That was a scrap going back and forth. They were hurting each other. And Cody is way faster than Rob Font. So yeah. if you're giving yeah. Thomas Almeida at minus 111 in what's going to be a striking fight versus yeah. a slower boxer, I'm going to take that bet. I put three units on him at minus 111 in pinnacle. Um, if he doesn't get taken out with a big shot early, I think he ends up pushing Rob Font back and taking over late with, with uh, Muay Thai combinations. Um, and that's assuming there's no improvements. If I, I think there's a good chance that we see a, the best Almeida in this fight, having fought three rounds with a guy like Jimmy Rivera, having gone to yeah. Phuket top team, training with the likes of Lertzilla, and just his overall base of striking knowledge. Um, yeah, I think I think he's a, a good spot here, a good solid spot in what's going to be a, a fight that uh, stylistically favors his strengths. The last point I'm going to make is I see people arguing that Rob Font can take this to the mat and, and out-grapple out Almeida. No way. There's no way that's going to happen. Almeida you don't see that? Amazing Dude, Almeida has an amazing uh, get-up game. Almeida's, yeah, he just, he he's just uh, he's his get-up stuff. You, you don't see his jiu-jitsu, but I guarantee it's better than Font's. I guarantee Oh, that. his jiu-jitsu for sure, it, yeah. It's disengaging yeah, his jiu-jitsu. And his get-up game, his get-up game is amazing, is, is Almeida's. Jimmy couldn't hold this guy down, you know, so. Yeah, I don't see the ball that's true. Rob Font being able to do it. I think, I honestly think there's going to be a sketchy moment early, and I'm going to be really sweaty, and maybe Almeida gets knocked <laughs> out quick. But if if he doesn't get knocked out quick, I see I see that buzzsaw taking over, man. I mm. see him landing. Oh, he's yeah. got so many targets. He hits the leg inside the leg, body shot, a, a nice um, uh, overhand right as a counter that's going to counter the jab of, of Font. Like, I just – I see a lot of openings. And I really like that he addresses his, his uh, issues. Like, he's moving his feet more. He's more yeah. mobile now. He's moving his head more. He said in pre-fight interviews, look, I got to look out for the – for the right hand down the pipe. I've got to move my head in this fight. I've got to, I've got, I've got time. He said, he's like, I've got three rounds. So I expect him to come out very cautiously, you know, and, and see what Font's going to give him. Once he gets Font's timing down, boom, he starts <coughs> moving forward. He strings together five, six, seven punch combinations, knees, yeah. kicks, elbows, everything. And, uh, and takes Font out. Cause Font got dinged up bad in that Pedro Munoz fight. And that was only three months ago. And that's against Pedro Munoz, a guy who's not as high level as, as Almeida, but fights similarly in the stand yeah. department hands high you know good short combinations good short left hook that rocked him almeida has got but, an amazing but left rob font was rob font was rocking him around for a little bit exactly exactly so he he can do that but if he doesn't take the guy out and the guy starts hurting him he doesn't recover very well that's why uh lineker could just walk him down because he he yeah. can't if he gets put on the back foot he can't 
regain the momentum. Uh, and, and, and the other thing I want to note too is Almeida has amazing tendencies. Like I always talk about, chin down, hands up, eyes open. Like he sees strikes in the chaos. So the idea that if Rob Font makes it a brawl, he's going to catch him, I don't think that's likely. I think if it's, it becomes a brawl, it's Almeida who finds success in the chaos. What Rob Font wants to do is bomb from the outside and slow the pace down. Slow the pace, slowly chip away, look for that big shot that's going to drop him and then try to finish him. But I don't, I don't see that happening because I've heard Almeida speak about how this fight's going to go and, and, and that he's going to be elusive early, that he's going to take his time and that he's addressed those issues. So there it is. So far, it's my only bet of the card. I got uh, Thomas Almeida. Minus 111, three units to win 2.7. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I, I definitely have uh, Thomas Amini as well. I think I, I do think Rob Font has a good uh, case here uh, that that uh, that Seb's made because he does have a bit of boxing. And guys who, uh, who generally throw Cody Garbrandt uh, and kind of force him into boxing situations, I think can open up a few. It's if Thomas Almeida can take those few situations where he – gets hit, capitalize on it, and then make that a trap for Rob Font every single time and keep it coming. Because uh, in the Jimmy Rivera fight, he was getting downed, but he was fixing himself, and he was always kind of auto-correcting what he was doing. And by those late rounds, he started to come up. And I think Jimmy Rivera didn't really press the action because he felt, I mean, I already got these three knockdowns in two rounds. I got this fight. If he's going to you know, be on his back foot, I'd rather let him. And I think that's why a lot of uh, shots got hit off by Thomas Almeida. And if it was a five-round fight, we might see a bit of a different uh, uh, a different outcome, right? Uh, so I think he's fought a lot of high-level competition because of that. Now, Rob Font fought a guy who wanted to become a part of the UFC and in a, in a huge brawl, uh, showing he is a bit chinny. But uh, Pedro Munoz was not going home uh, unhappy. And that guy... Um, uh, that guy was only had one loss going up to uh, uh, that fight. Or no, two. Yeah, he had two losses going up to that fight. And he was pretty deadly, knocking out a lot of guys, submitting a lo- uh, submitting most uh, most of his competition. So uh, I do think Thomas Almeida has a good uh, ground game, at least to disengage and get back up, throw those flurries, throw those knees, throw those kicks. Um, and he has a great uppercut. Uh, I like I like where he places that at times, and um, I think that it will be a little too much for Rob Font. Uh, his best bet is to see something in the first round to capitalize on, and just keep the you know keep the good times rolling and hope that he can bounce off that and keep his game plan going and keep uh, Almeida on his back foot until maybe a big knockout or another opportunity. But I mean, Tom Almeida is amazing at just recovery and not letting that happen again. Um, I think Tom Salmeida wins it. Uh, he's got a bit, a bit of a bigger weapon bag, and uh, and is always kind of mixing that weapon bag around. Combos, kicks, moving off the spot, whatever it takes to win the fight. And he, and he varies the target so much. Like, he attacks mm-hmm. the legs, he lands knees, elbows, body shots, you know. So yeah, I see his path to victory 100%. I think the later the fight goes, it's uh, more for Thomas as well, too. Yeah. Yeah, like if this goes to the decision, I see Thomas taking it. But um, next up, and you got to remember too. This is this is like this is betting perspective, right? So I'm talking yeah. about from the perspective of a minus one eleven. We're not betting on a minus two hundred. We're not betting. You're not even a minus yeah. one fifty. So like, I just think the, the odds are close enough. It's like he's okay, worth the he's bookie, worth the eleven cents. You know, ten eleven. Yeah, the back. bookie opened a minus one seventy five, and he got bet up to this. So it's just like. You know, I agree with the bookie. I think he's more like a minus one seventy, minus two hundred right here, just because the variety of weapons and everything I said. Everything I said. Yeah, I see. I see value in him as well. If you want to go on that side, but I do see value in, in Rob Fun as the underdog. Just why? Uh, it's it's a pass for me. I just don't see how this fight goes. Just like one of the fights from last week. I just don't like. It's. I know it's gonna be standing up, but. Um, I'm I'm too scared to with already all the guys I have bet I'm too fucking scared to have money on Almeida and he gets knocked out early or Robbie Fonch and he gets the decision that runs into a bus as well so uh, I'm gonna st- stay away and pass and uh, just watch that one on the on the pay per view but what a banger to knock off the pay per view and then we have yeah. to go into this fucking fight <laughs> John Volante 
versus Francis Barroso. I have no idea why this is on the pay per view, guys. But we're gonna have to talk about it for a little bit. Um, no, Charles Yeah, I'm. I'm. I pass. Oh, <laughs> really? That's it. This, this fight. The thing with this fight is like you. I don't think John Vellante takes fighting seriously enough to ever want to bet on him because he just his volume is not the greatest down the stretch. Um, he he does show some offensive potential, but realistically, uh, not a, not a great fighter. Francis Marbojoso, again, very low volume, uh, tough to tough to trust him. But could he slow the fight down and just kind of have the better sh- shots throughout the, the the fight here over the course of three rounds? I think he could. So <coughs> why would you ever bet this either way? Just easy pass. Yeah, for me, it's an easy pass as well. John Vellante, the meathead, yeah. versus Francis Marbojoso. Safarov dropped if- him with one leg. Safarov <laughs> was on one leg and he dropped John Vellante. That's- John Vellante got outstruck. Two to one by Pat Cummins. Yeah. Uh, completely out of Shogun. You know, like. That was a good fight. I got to admit, as sloppy as that got, it was entertaining. And you got to oh, see yeah, a lot of fun. cool stuff. It was fun catching that Shogun KO. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, how, about, how about what you said earlier, Izzy, about like him not wanting to be or not not liking fighting? But I said. He- I, before before we started going live, I said he's he likes being a fighter more than he likes fighting. Like he likes just and being it's with, true. with the boys. Mm-hmm. Like he likes <laughs> yeah, get the free fighting. limos. Yeah, like that's that's what he that's and you see that pre fight like he's just laughing and, ah whatever it's just a fight like I just I can't trust that at all man. Oh but, my god! But also his volume is so so bad and he'll just back up to the cage and stand still. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like you're not fighting, you're not winning. His corner fight. yells at him all the time. Why did Sorry. they have to put this fight on the main event, like on the, nothing, or I the pay per view? You could have, you could have put Ortiz and Pantoja. That that <laughs> should have been on the main card, right? Yeah. Or even the even Islam versus Tibau or Ige versus um. Uh, Arce should have been on. Arce. That should. But there's there's such newcomers, it'd be tough to justify it. But that as far as a good fight, that's a almost awesome anything's fight. better than this, though. Yeah. True. Almost anything, like fuck, like this is like on the level of the surreal Asker fight next week or n- or next month. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think the reason this Pass. got, <laughs> I think the reason this got moved up is because it's a heavyweight fight. Well, light heavy, close to you. Someone's gonna get knocked out, so it's a curtain. You know, it's kind of to prepare the uh, the curtain, right? Um, so maybe not though, man. What if they just don't do anything? That's oh true, God. but That's I think, but, I but they're two hundred five. They're two hundred five. Doing nothing can land you some big punch out of nowhere. You know what I mean? All right, all right. They're you, so, so you're you want to go rewatch uh, Gonzaga versus Constantina Rokin? <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't exactly pick it, but I mean, there could be worse fights on this card, right? Maybe, yeah, maybe it does. Could be worse. Could be just, way I, worse. If this, um, looking if from this, a betting perspective, there's no way I touch it. Like, yeah, I, mean, I just hope it ends in a knockout, so at least I'm getting my sure. money's worth on pay per view. Yeah, you're gonna see a lot of scrappy moments, a lot of like, a lot of bombs, a lot of kind of misses and stumbles. You know, scrappy moments. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna look so bad. Barroso's always gonna try to go <laughs> over the top, and Barroso's really small. Gian Valente is pretty big, I have to say. Uh, doesn't use his height very well, but he does have He's knockout big. power. He has a glass chin. He does, yeah, yeah. He got shadowed a lot, and uh, I mean, I I would actually put money on uh, on Volante getting KO'd, but uh, I mean, Barroso is is quite old. weren't you yeah. weren't you gonna pick? weren't you gonna bet Barroso? Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's looking like it. Oh, that plus money Volante fade. Yeah. Plus money, Volante fade. It's nice. You already know. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I'd go Barroso on this. I say he uh, scores a big over the top right hand on this guy when he's uh, uh, he could the fence. He could. Safarov I think it. did it. Safarov did it exactly. Uh, but Safarov actually, you know, throws punches. Like he likes to throw punches. Yeah. Mm. Barroso just likes to stand there and have just ah yuck. Let's, let's move on. Yeah, get away from me, <laughs> this fight. Get away, fight. Okay, next up is actually there's another move. banger, boys. Banger. Actually, a banger. And I was I was saying this is I think this, this is, is an fight. awesome, 
awesome fight. I think this is a fight of the night. Wait, um, people saying got... that this card sucks just don't know who these guys are. Like yeah. this record, their combined records, what? Like uh, 30, 27, 27 and 2. And two? Yeah. 27, 27 and 2. Jeez. Not including amateur fights? Yeah. Uh, so we got Shane, Hurricane Shane Burgos versus um, I have a feeling if if he was still at that price, Z would take him. But uh, we I have, would. I, yeah. I slept on that line move. You're not man. taking I didn't Burgos? See it. I just, I, man. Not at this yeah, price. Yeah. Why? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk yeah. about it. Later. Maybe at this Shane. price. Maybe. I'm yeah, surprised. But, if he sees something, but Hurricane Shane versus Calvin Qatar, and I'll go first, man. I have four units on Hurricane Shane. I I put three units on him at like minus one fifty two, and then another uh, one at one one twenty six or one twenty eight or something. Um, I just see he. I don't know how he's gonna lose this fight. I see Calvin Qatar strikes a lot in all his fights, and he throws single strikes at the guy. Something that Burgos likes to capitalize on is uh, when somebody throws single strikes and he can he can uh, counter over them. Uh, mm-hmm. His boxing is very crisp inside. We know that. We know Burgos uh, uses his head movement very well. Gets his head off the center line. Something he does very well. His takedown defense is very good. So there's no late. There's going to be no late takedowns for Calvin Qatar. How he usually secures rounds. Calvin Qatar he secured two rounds. At least two rounds by uh, taking down Andre Feely with, within the last ten seconds. I don't see that happening here. I see Burgos. He was also, but he was also boxing Feely up. Yeah, uh, he looked good. He, I'm not gonna lie, he looked good against Feely. But if we're gonna play boxing for boxing, and yeah, it's a boxing definitely. match, I'm going Burgos all day. Mm-hmm. And and that's definitely. that's what I'm that's what I'm betting on. So I think it's gonna be stay standing. And I got Burgos to beat Qatar. I think Qatar is a viable fucking opponent. I think he's a very good opponent. But uh, when it comes down to it, I think Burgos is going to keep his undefeated records. He's going to pick him apart. I don't see a knockout coming, even though Burgos hits super hard. But uh, I see a nice three-round decision, maybe a 30-27. And uh, Burgos taking this. So uh, I got four units on Burgos to win. Let me check quick. And by the way, he hit at one point. He was minus one twenty. Minus, yeah, that man. Like that's ridiculous. Burgos. So money. Yeah, he was minus yeah. one twenty. At, at one at one point, he was minus one twenty. So that's like. Uh, Even I said, now, he's still it's still the best price you you can get him in any yeah, of his UFC maybe. fights. Like he's been a bigger favorite his first three UFC fights. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Huge favorite. So I, I put four units on Burgos to win 2.75 units. Um, like I said, I, I think he's better everywhere. Z, how about you, man? Dude, I love the game of Shane Burgos. An extremely educated and loose lead hand. A nice sharp uh, cross, like right-hand counter. Um, he loves to throw it over the top. He's so quick with it. He's It's on like a hair trigger. It's always loaded. Um like I said, super good lead hand. He likes to play around. His combos are so loose, but but sharp and quick. Um, so honestly, some of the best hands in the UFC. I'll say it right now. I think he has some of the best hands, some of the fastest hands, and most educated hands in the UFC. But that being said, the one gaping hole in his game and something that Calvin Qatar can exploit is he's so susceptible to right hands. It's not even funny. Charles Rosa was landing right hands on him. Uh, God Alfredo Pepe was landing right hands on him. Trator didn't because Trator was just running that whole fight. Um, but he keeps that lead hand so low and, and loose, and he likes to slip and counter. But what Calvin Carter does is um, uh, Deligrati calls it a, a skip jab, I guess, where he like he'll pump the jab, then throw a, a one-two as he like closes the gap with the pump. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. he'll, he'll fake step in and one-two, and that's gonna catch Shane Burgos. Like it's just that he's so open for that one thing. And Calvin Carter does that one thing that it's tough for me to bet at these odds. If we're still talking about better than the minus 150 range, I'm betting Shane Burgos because, like I said, I think his boxing is some of the best in the UFC. No joke at all. Um, And he's just a super, you know, again, young kid, well-trained, good camp, uh, very dedicated fighter. Um, Goes, does the different aspects of MMA like we were talking about with his uh, Tiger Shulman guys. Um, The best thing to know, too, though, is Calvin Carter – 
he was on short notice for that debut. So when you take a short notice debut, you, you got to expect he's going to look better here, having a full camp to prepare. Um, he's definitely no joke in his own right. 17 and two powerful hands, uh, good left hook, good right hand. But like Seb said, um, the boxing edge definitely goes to Shane Burgos. And another thing that I really like about Shane Burgos and not enough fighters do this is if you're winning the striking battle and you drop the guy, don't go to guard, just make him stand back up. Like it's the best thing. Yeah. You can do. Yeah. And he, and he does it every time. He does it every time, man with, with, Pepe especially, Pepe I fight. think that fight could have been called because if the guy says get up and the ref says get up and then you just stay there like, oh, no. Like, that's yeah. the fight. Like, you ha- you're you done. <laughs> yeah, you're done. If you don't get up, you're done, right? So, like, yeah. uh, just a tactical thing I love seeing from Shane. But what he has said pre this fight is that he's like, look, I've been so concerned about the knockout that I haven't really been using my submissions in fights. So, if you want to get a little, if you want to get crazy, if you want to get a little degenerate, uh, Shane Burgos by submission is plus one thousand, so oh. ten to one odds if he if he dings him up and makes Calvin shoot and then takes the neck, like he's saying in his pre fights, um, that could be a cheeky little prop bet if you're if you're so inclined. Um, but honestly, I I think what's more likely is that Shane just has the better spots, outboxes Calvin for three, and uh, takes a clear thirty twenty seven. Um, just faster, sharper in the pocket. His defense, like I said, he gets hit with the right hand, but he slips and rolls with punches so nicely. Um, and he's also got a very unique body type where he's strong, like you said, but extremely long arms. Yeah. Um, but he has long arms, so he can reach with the left hook, but he doesn't. He never gets crowded. Like he's so comfortable in the pocket. It's a it's a nice blend to have where he can fight long and utilize his his physical attributes but they don't hinder him when guys pressure in and crowd him like he never gets kind of bunched up in there you know what i mean like like a lot of tall fighters or long fighters do so i'm a huge fan of of shane burgos i think he takes the fight easily i hope the odds bump up because his one the one chink in his armor is something that calvin has yeah i believe so Mm -hmm. Uh, Gib? I think Qatar, uh, he's pretty decent. Um, he throws lots of singles and, uh, he has quite a bit of a, a unique sense of footwork. Um, he's, uh, he's pretty good at establishing that pace on a lot of, on a lot of guys kind of lulling people into, I, I like to say moments where he really capitalizes on simple stuff. Uh, sometimes he drops his hands a bit in in certain situations but uh, i think he's pretty sneaky with his knees and kicks um and it, it i think it's a good matchup but shane burgos is very very uh destructive but he's that cautious and careful guy who can sit in that pocket and really devastate with punches and he has a grappling game um that again we haven't seen in a while uh his last few fights have all been uh mostly decisions so i guess he hasn't really been able to uh to set that one up uh huge ko potential so i mean these guys are definitely going to be uh standing and trading some bombs um and uh you know shane burgos working with uh with tiger showman like you were saying uh, working with jimmy riviera as well such a good camp um i think uh, i think that uh grotto Rito fight really showed uh that he's ready to go with guys who can uh throw the kitchen sink at you because uh, as tired as Pepe was, he was still really throwing a lot of stuff into it. He was really throwing his hip into the kicks. And you saw him exhausted. Uh, and he definitely got outworked by a, a very healthy and, and always kind of ready Shane Burgos. Uh, and it's going to be interesting seeing a more calm, kind of trying not to move more than he should, Calvin Qatar, kind of controlling that pace. And he has, uh, he has the experience in terms of... Uh, few more fights but again i mean shane burrow is undefeated and he's coming for your head every single time um and it, it's just gonna be an interesting fight but i got shane burgos in this one because i like his style and uh and i think that he's got a good one to emulate if at least for the 145 division all right next up the first of- one one last point yeah. sorry to jump in said no, one last ahead. point i wanted to make about um about uh catter and one thing I noticed that him and Del Grotti work a lot on is switch steps. Yeah. And firing yeah. right away. And yeah. that's something I think in MMA is really useful because you see guys like Wonderboy and when he knocked <laughs> out um, Johnny Hendricks, 
what what the final nail in the coffin was was he sw- he switched stance and threw a power shot off the off the left side, I believe. So he stepped with the left, and stuff like that just really trips more traditional strikers up because you switch your stance, everything's coming the opposite way, right? That's just one one little thing I saw in in Calvin's game that I was I was impressed with. You know that he's actually working on you know switch to lefty and fire right away, fire right away. You know so. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That impressed me. Yeah. Um. Something else about. Co main. Uh, yeah, we're we're going to the co main right now, and um, before actually before we go to the co main, did you guys notice? Uh, Burgos is one of the only fighters I noticed do this. When he's swinging, Brian, Brian Stan pointed this out. When he's swinging inside the pocket, he has his eyes wide open for counters. He, oh yeah, yeah. He, he like that's beautiful. Yeah. I love that about. Yeah, him. he's a shark, man. He's just waiting. He's always he's always just waiting inside there. He's very comfortable with stuff coming his way too. He just he rolls. He he's got his hands up like he's very comfortable. You know. Yeah. And and that's what enables him to have those sh- those sharp counters, those left hooks, those you know. Man, yeah, he love his striking. But next up, we got the Coleman event. We got uh, Volk and Ozdemir. Taking on the champ, Daniel DC Cormier, the fucking champ, boys. And uh, I'm going to start off by saying I have 8.25 units on Cormier. I know just a straight bet. 8.25 units on Cormier, minus 275 to win three units. Boom. Is that it? That's your breakdown? Just boom. (laughs) Boom. But no, Enough set. No, I like it though. Uh, good we have okay, so like two words, man. Kelly on the sin. That guy, like uh, DC was saying, uh, Vulcan, you can see before there's been quit in him, and I understand it's before Neil Melanson has been in him, uh, with his camp and Greg Jones and all those guys and Henry Hoof did all his camp, but. Kelly Anderson fucking put a beat down on him, scored ten takedowns or eleven takedowns in in less than two rounds, and then he ended up uh, choking him out with a neck crank pretty badly. Um, his his win so far in the UFC, he got that I believe it was a split deci- split decision win over OSP, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. split decision. So uh, okay. And he didn't put away. He's he's a hard hitter, but he didn't put away OSP. Uh, Viable, whatever it's his U- UFC debut. Next up, he goes and he faces Misha Serkinov, knocks him out with such a weird punch. It goes like behind his ear, yeah. and it's just like it's like placed perfectly. It doesn't look like there's a lot of power behind this punch. It just looks like it's placed really perfect. And then and we've learned, and we've learned recently that Serkinov is a hammer, not a nail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's not a nail. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Exactly. And. um uh, so and then after he goes and he faces Jimmy Manua, who, uh, like DC says, when Jimmy Manua loses, he loses it by knockout. So it's no surprise he got knocked out. He got knocked out in the clinch by another like weird kind of like. It was a regular break. looking punch, eh? Yeah, but then it was. Like, it was really weird. And then like okay, so whatever he goes. With, and like DC's been saying, it's gonna take more than a lucky punch. They. Uh, oh, I got the hiccups there. To beat, it's, it's going to take more than a lucky punch to beat him. Um, it wasn't really. I don't think the Manoa one you can say is lucky though, because he just grabbed the collar tie, and then just started feeding him. I guess it was with his left hand, maybe right. Just started yeah. feeding him hooks and uppercuts, just like. So it was. It was that 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 tie clinch control, in the clinch. Yeah, that was the, the Manoa one. I'll give to him a hundred percent. Yeah. The the only thing is, I think to beat DC, you're gonna need to knock him out, and we saw John Jones do that. But Vulcan's not on the same um, planet as John Jones in terms of <laughs> or anything. Uh, and then we got fucking a lot of people saying he hits as hard as Rumble Johnson, and nobody like. Do you guys know how hard Rumble Johnson hits? It's like that's sickening that people even think he Vulcan always the mere hits as hard as rumble Johnson. That's sickening to me, but, uh, yeah. And then uh, DC because he sparred him because he was willing to spar with them. Right. He's the yeah, guy who worked with rumble. Fucking, they, they think he got the run. Uh, uh, I'm just going to spar. Yeah. He didn't get nothing. He didn't get nothing. <laughs> 
Probably got the concussion. Yeah, he got concussed. That's what he got exactly. He thought he sparred him. <laughs> and then after, um, so I I just think DC okay. His last fight against Jones didn't look too good, but before that, he broke uh, Anthony Johnson, and then Anthony Johnson retired. Um, before that, he fought. Um, the fix was in, Sebs. The fix was in. What do you mean? Rumble through that fight, man. No, he didn't. The fix he was have, in. He just quit. The fix was in. He just quit. He even said in the post fight, he's like, hey, I want to uh, shout out to my family. Thanks for not coming with me this time. Like, thanks for not betting on me. I told you not to bet on me this time. The yeah. fix was I in. Never do that. Yeah, he. Yeah, if, you, if you if you watch the post fight, it's right in the cage. He goes. He thanks his family for not coming with him this huh. time. That's weird, but whatever. Right? If, yeah, and I'm a big Rumble Plus fan. I Max bet on Rumble and he shit the bed, so I'm still bitter about that. Mm. <laughs> but uh, he DC did break him. He said he was going to break him, and that's what he did. And I I see the same thing. DC breaking. Vulcan owes me over three rounds. I don't see Vulcan landing. As long as this fight, if this fight goes past the first round, Vulcan's already in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Because in getting the first 30 down. seconds, he's getting taken down and he's getting mauled. I can see that. DC is better in every aspect of MMA. Every aspect. Everywhere. He's better. He 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 can get a, he can get a W from a decision, a submission, and a knockout here. Vulcan only has the knockout. So if we're going off of that and we're betting on that, I have for sure 8.25 units on him. And then you know what I did? I, I became a degenerate and I threw another unit on him in a parlay with somebody later in the card in the main event of the evening. Oh, shit. I had to. I went nice a plus 104 degen parlay. So that's what I did. Uh, 9.25 units in total on Daniel Cormier, uh, second most a cyborg for the most I've had it ever. So, pretty pretty fucking confident on Daniel Squash Cormier. Squash match, eh? Just yeah. a just I, a layup. Oh, this is nothing for him. This is nothing. I just my my Easy word. I get I get what you're saying. If you watch the tape and you look at the skill level, you look at the competition level, you look at how the fights should play out. You watch that that uh, I believe it was Bellator, right? The fight where he yeah. got mauled. Yeah, Ozdemir. I get it, man. And you should cash. But for my money, if I'm looking at minus 300 off a guy who just got knocked out bad, like, yeah, not just the knockout in this case. It's that was must have been so demoralizing for him. Like it absolutely crushed him. And then you're in this position where it's like, hey, guess what? Never mind, you're still the champ. Go out there and defend it. Like you got to pick yourself back he, up. You got to mentally be prepared is, to go back in there. He's saying that's a, that is weird for him. That he like he has to. He's saying he's fighting for the belt right now because yeah, he says he, he's, he's not, not the champ. The belt. Yeah, he says he's, he's not, not the champ. Belt. He's like, I'm not the champ right now. He's like, I'm gonna fight for the belt. He's like, if I win, is that what you want to hear? I don't. That's not what I want to hear from my guy. <laughs> I, well, I'm he's not fighting, the champ. I, I'm not the champ, but he's fighting with fucking Volkan Ozdemir. He's going to be the champ. He said after Saturday, he will be the champ. But when you just look at the career trajectory, and this like this is outside the, the cage stuff, so I don't, all, I don't like to focus on these intangibles. But when I look at it, it's just like, man, you got your life changed. You were crushed. Now you're getting thrown back in there against the guy who is hell-bent, like on, his, on the way up. What is he, 30, 31? Yeah. I'm going to bring up his age right quick. But, like, this is this dude's opportunity. Oh, he's 28. Volkan's 28. 28. So this is a yeah. – super young guy for light heavyweight and this is his opportunity right like he just burst on the scene knocking everybody out um i don't know man i just can't touch it i just i i think dc wins but if anything it's what the odds say they are right now like what did you what was the line you got on him minus 275 so now we're looking at minus 315 so it's it's gone even deeper you know i guess 275 yeah i guess but for me, it's just like I don't want to trust DC here. I, I get exactly what you're saying. But with being 38, 10 years older, that rough weight cut, that that mental fuckery, the, the, the way that he's just kind of joking around a lot pre-fight, the way that he's like doing a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of desk stuff, all this shit. It's like, man, I think DC was riding off into the sun. I don't, I don't think he was coming back. If John was still in the picture, DC's retired right now. So like how far out of shape did he get? Luke Rockhold's not training with him anymore. Luke is over with Vulcan. 
Like, so wh- who's he got at AKA? Does he have Kane? Is Kane yeah, back Kane, training? Kane's back. Yeah, Kane's there. Back tra- All right. Well, Kane's back good. training. Kane's coming off Vulcan. the couch, right? Yeah. yeah. Kane's coming in off the couch, whereas Volkan's training with Rockhold, who's getting ready for Yoel. I just, it's just a big. Apparently, just, they don't it's train the together. Type of fight there. That could be a Volkan Ozdemir fight. It could you be watch a Volkan the Ozdemir fight. Yeah. What's it- that? If you watch the embedded, uh, and even the Errol Hawani interview, he says he, he doesn't train with Rock with yeah. respect. They kept to All themselves right. apparently during the camps, and then uh, I think I think on embedded uh, they asked Rock, do he thinks he's gonna win?" He pretty much said what everyone else expects. Like he's gonna wrestle, he's gonna strike. Volkan has a good shot. Tanya Cormier has a better one. You know. All right, hey, that's good. That's what that's, that's what he seems to both say. Both guys, right? That's what he seemed to say. Yeah. Uh, for me, I just there's too many red flags with DC man being knocked out, getting all that. I just and the line. You're making me like, shit my fucking pants over here. I have nine point two five units on this guy, eh? Well, you got it, man. Like he's. I just think this could be a Volkan Ozdemir fight. Yeah. I don't see it being a Volkan Ozdemir fight, so I'm good. <laughs> all right, um, all right. Like a Volkan Ozdemir fight, and particularly in the first two minutes. So, yeah. yeah, this is not going to be that. I I don't see I don't see him knocking him out. But uh, Gib, it's time for you to put your money where your mouth is. Yeah, yeah. Like my, I was taking my Vulcan. first bet. My very first bet is going on the fucking Vulcan because this guy he's max betting Vulcan. Guy. Yeah, man. Yeah, he really has lived up to his name. No time. He ends guys in the first rounds. Uh, you know the Jimmy Manuel fight. I I absolutely agree. If you're gonna beat Jimmy Manuel, you have to knock him out. And the way he knocked him out was a little sneaky. I mean, the punch didn't. It looked very normal. But I mean, that's fighting. Normal shit knocks you out. Normal stuff. Hell, I've seen just a regular stiff kind of jab just get corked on someone's uh, chin, and bang, they drop. Sack of potatoes. And um. Vulcan has those average punches that just seem to hit the mark and be a lot harder than most people think they are. Um, uh, obviously, DC has the bag. He has the bag of tricks, and he can just sort through what he wants to do. Oh, I can, I'm going to take him down now. Uh, I'm not afraid of his submission. He, he got submission by Kelly Anderson. I, I, I'm way better than that. I think Daniel Cormier is an amazing uh, uh, high-level brown belt in jiu-jitsu. I believe he's black by now. But uh, I believe they advertise him as a brown. And, again, already an a, a ra- Olympic wrestler. So high-level grappling. And, uh, you know, Vulcan didn't really meet Misha's grappling in that fight. So we never really got to uh, see that, in, at least recently. Uh, Oven St. Pru fight. I think Oven St. Pru gets into this weird thing where he starts switching stances a lot. I do think he's deadly. But he tends to do it so often that it just wastes the clock and he can lose these decisions. And that's what Vulcan was able to drag him into and just beat him off of um, activity. And I don't see Daniel Cormier switching stances and being inactive. So I get what uh, what Seb's saying because this guy's going to go to the ground. And and Daniel Cormier is going to go for these shoots. You're going to see him early in the uh, the middle of the fight. And, uh, and and near the end, until that bell rings, there's going to be tons of takedowns. And if and if DC gets an easy one, you're done. You have to make DC overcommit to something that's maybe a uh, uh, bait, and then Vulcan has to literally let him have it. But in that chance, that's when Daniel has the bigger bag of tricks. That's when Daniel has been there before, been in those five-round fights, been in those, oh, I'm in the pocket with some guy who throws bombs. Fuck it. I'm going to take you down. I'm going to take one, and then I'm going to hit you with one again, and we're going to do another Rumble fight. And I absolutely believe that Rumble is a huge uh, knockout potential, but so is Vulcan. And, um, I mean, how many can you really take? It's like the lottery machine. You eventually, uh, all the slot machines you eventually pull until you win, and I feel like that's a lot of fighters. You keep hitting them, you keep hitting them, keep hitting them, and then finally – you might just be that lucky guy you sat down at the table with nine losses on your record, but bang, you pulled the trigger on some guy who was high level, and and you just hit the number, right? And I think Vulcan is is that guy who might step up to the slot machine, boom, put his quarter in, and, and that's DC's lights out, man. I think uh, I think Vulcan ends it. You got, the other thing is, like, DC has never been knocked out before. No, he hasn't. Really bad knockout. Yeah. 
So like, I just fuck, too many red flags for me, man. But but by all accounts, DC should maul him. DC DC should Bro, maul. He should be a great fight, fight no matter what. And fucking power bomb him. This is an awesome He's gonna fight. power bomb him. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be on the edge of my seat from from bow to bow, and you better believe in me texting this guy back and forth. What? <laughs> That's. I just I'm passing this fight. I don't want to touch it. I don't know. I love it. I love it. I oh, I, I, I was we're jumping to the next fight, but I was eyeing that fight down for for months. As soon as it got announced, I was like, oh my goodness. I think, the argument, I think the argument started the second it got announced. Oh. Uh, that's so both of you both of you are super emotional about that one. Yeah. yeah. Just digging yourselves in. Arguing, digging your trenches. Yeah, yeah. He's got five <laughs> units. I got no, no, five no two five units. I got a bunch I know, of trenches. I see to what's dig. happening. I I what picked the. I got a. Tr- I got a bunch of trenches to dig. To be honest with you. <laughs> well, I know my picks. Uh, all right. Oh. So next up, we got the main event of the evening. We got Francis the Predator fucking the Garnu taking on. Stipe Miocic, the reigning heavyweight champion, and this is a great fight. This this alone might be worth the $65, man. I'm not even kidding. This is a, an awesome, awesome, awesome fight. Uh, a heavyweight title. Yeah, but this, a heavyweight is, title. but this is one of the biggest heavyweight matchups in, like, a long time. Uh, like, heavyweight title fights in a long time. Like, like Kane yeah. versus uh, JDS? Yeah, at, yeah. at least. At Maybe. least. I think this is. I, I think this is bigger than Steve Pan Alistair, and I thought that one was pretty big. No. Yeah. Yeah. This is bigger than that for sure. Absolutely. And um, uh, there, there's not uh, too many ways to break this fight down, uh, like stylistically, other than like Nagano hits fucking hard. Look what he did to Overeem. <laughs> He hit so he hit so fucking hard. Like, oh, man. He put over him in outer <clears throat> space. He put him like he deaded him. He deaded him. That I challenge every one of the viewers to go back, watch the knockout, and then watch. Um, if you as soon as he knocks him out, uh, Alistair over him's toes curl. Like oh, yeah. he he's dead, man. Like, he, I was worried. I was worried. He hurt. Yeah, that. yeah. He did. I thought he hurt something. Like he was out cold, <clears throat> and like um. Just the power he beholds, even in the clinch in that in that fight, you can see like he just he doesn't know what to do too much in there, but he'll fucking hold you in the clinch and you're staying there because he decides you're not moving and he decides when you're moving. He's Bane, bro. This guy is a physical project of the Performance Institute. They're fucking jacking him up with all the fucking free nu- nutrients that they can put in him, all the all the supplements that they're giving him. They're just jacking this guy up. Did you see the promo of him with the Bane mask, the <laughs> oxygen mask? And he's running on he's yeah. running he's running on the fucking treadmill. That's, that's ridiculous. comic book. Oh, that's ridiculous. He's he's running on the treadmill with the Bane mask on. But uh like Stipe Stipe is coming off the, the knockouts of himself, you know. And he's been in knockout of himself. No, the knockouts f- the, with himself. You know they. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah, he's they, coming they, off knockouts himself. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You worded it better than I did. No, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and then, uh, but fucking, I got Francis Naganu here all day, man. Four units Naganu minus one sixty five to win two point four two units, and then he's my other piece of the parlay. One unit, uh, Cormier and Naganu to win 1.04 units. Um, so I have a max bet pretty much on Nagano. I think he goes in there and he deads Stipe Miocic just like he's been doing everybody else. I think that's the only way to break down this fight is to say how long it's going to last, man. I think that we've been talking for longer than it's going to last. Like uh, <laughs> I'm telling the truth. This is going to be a first-round knockout, and I don't see Stipe having – the power to trade and Stipe when he does trade, he's not like Alistair or anything who find uh, fights at range and distance. I think Alistair is actually a tougher opponent than Stipe just because of the the range and the distance and the te- the technical like aspect that uh, Alistair fights at. Uh, Stipe gets in inside the pocket and he brawls more and he boxes more and he's he's more willing to trade. If you're willing to trade with Francis Naganu, it's not a good thing. So um, therefore, I have a max bet on Naganu, man. 
Bottom at minus 165. And uh, I'm pretty fucking confident in him as well. Z? Yeah. Um, I get it. Again, I get it. The thing with this fight is, like, we, we just haven't seen Francis tested. This is a five-round fight. So if – of course, you're going to say, well, it's not going to go long. Like, you, your, your read is that he's going to land something big, take him out. Yeah. Uh, durability doesn't even matter, right? Yeah, like I, I'm honestly, dismi- and I feel bad for it, but I'm dismissing everything about Stipe right now. Even though like he's such a great fighter, I'm not overlooking him as an opponent. I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying he can't uh, connect with, but like what he does is he's never been the guy that grinds out decisions or anything. Stipe, he's, he comes at you and you with the forward pressure and he fights and boxes you up. He's gonna box the Nagani. He's in a lot of trouble. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I see. I do see Stipe getting hit. Um, a lot of people will say like, "Who has Nagani beaten?" But if you really look at it, who it like who is Stipe beaten? Like they've knocked out the same couple of guys, right? Obviously, like yeah, pretty much. Of course, right. Stipe's been around longer. He's been yes. he's fought JDS. He's fought Mark Hunt. He's fought more guys. Yes, I get that. But if you look at them, like Arlovsky, Verdum, Hunt, JDS. Overeem, all these guys are like the past generation of heavyweights. They're all old when Stipe fights them. Stipe was the young, athletic, fast heavyweight. That's what he was coming up, right? Now he's 35. Yeah. He's on Joe Rogan experience talking about his back seizing up. He can't get out of bed. He's like, oh, yeah, I got all this kind of injuries. Like, <laughs> oh, he does his voice amazing. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, he does but, say that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, we're used to Stipe being the younger, faster guy, whereas now – He's actually four years older than his opponent. So that's that's something new. When you talk mm-hmm. about Nganu, I don't think you can say it's pure power. Like, the way he – his um, – Sorry, can you guys still hear me? Yeah, yeah. we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, so his stance, he's always on balance. Um, he, the, the way he faints, guys. And uh, there was a really good breakdown done by a guy on YouTube. I think he's called The Weasel. I think that's his name. Yeah, all, all, I, I, I've seen his videos. He's good. Dude, it was fucking sick. And he, he made a great point about, like, he made Overeem question and, and make mistakes, not because of the threat of the power, but because of all his feints. Like, he's always moving, moving his head, shifting his feet. And that's really weird when you get a super long, powerful guy doing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Also, he's a very patient fighter. We saw that in the Curtis Blades fight. If he hurts yeah. you, he doesn't swarm and blow his wad. He'll just pick pick his shots, look to land bombs, stay very composed. I like that about him. But in his last four fights, well, they're all in the first round. So I'm just so – like I don't want to have my money on this guy who looks like a monster in the first, but then Stipe survives and then starts putting the one-two together, starts pressuring, starts pushing him up against the cage, make him work. Second round goes by, third round. Now you're dealing with this guy who's just gassed out. You know what I mean? Now you're mm-hmm. dealing with a guy who starts to look super sloppy, who starts to look slow. And the champ takes over and everyone's like, oh, you know, it was a hype train. But I totally understand that, like, Stipe's game is to exchange with you at boxing range. So that's very dangerous for him because uh, he's durable, but he, he gets hit. Like, JDS was hitting him a lot. Overeem dropped him. You know, yeah, he gets hit. And you just I, – I think the power is real. I don't think you can get hit by Nganu. Um, going back to his debut where he knocked out um, – where he knocked out uh, – um, Luis Henrique, right? That uppercut, like it's just devastating power and improvements at an exponential rate. I bet on Curtis Blades when they fought because I saw the Henrique fight and I saw that okay, this dude gets taken down and the ref is who's getting him up. Now he's fighting this uh, full-sized heavyweight who's an American wrestler. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna take Curtis Blades to uh, to grind him out. He learned get up game and take down defense overnight. He was getting up no problem. He was defending takedowns much better. Um, and he can also fight off both stances. In the Curtis Blades fight, he was landing a lot of lefts off southpaw, which is, you know, a, a great skill to have, like we talked about before with uh, Cotter. You can switch your stance. I, I think it's very valuable in MMA. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I understand it, but I can pass, man. Like, I just – if he was the dog, I'd bet it, you know. But no, for sure. Trust, yeah. Can I trust him to finish Stipe at minus – we got – we're lucky we got uh, Sports Interaction, minus 165. I don't know, man. I just I don't know. Maybe if he gets better than minus 150, I do it. I, I do think he wins. I am leaning that way. Um, 
and it, it should, I think it's going to look obvious, but I'm just worried that I am worried about those latter rounds. Mm. How about you, Gib? I think uh, that Alistair fight showed a lot, and uh, I'm actually going to go check out that uh, that breakdown of that. I'd like to hear, because um, I thought going back and watching that fight that Naganu had his own way of kind of uh, taking care of somebody who had the experience, uh, had the... Um, you know, the kickboxing and the, the UFC experience and really made it le less of a problem and caught Overeem with a lot of very crisp jabs down the middle. And I think uh, Overeem took him way too lightly. He had his hands just kind of, he had his hands in a way that I feel like he was baiting Nganu in to try to get something. But in that sense, you kind of have to respect someone's power. And he just wasn't ready for that big swings of Naganu. And uh, this is a guy who really does work, and he improves every fight. Uh, from the Curtis Blades fight, he ends everybody in one round. Um, and uh, arguably made himself the only pick to, to even fight Stipe just, just by uh, going through the, the grinder and wrecking everybody. But Stipe has been doing really well. Uh, uh, as of late, I mean, going over the, the Gio Dos Santos fight, uh, again, one round. Um, the, I think the Alistair Overeem fight did give him a bit of uh, problems because Alistair almost got a really good kill team, but just could not wrap it up. And I guess because of the confusion, uh, you know, uh, Stipe was able to rally back and get that one. Um, um, one of his losses that I do remember, Stipe, was Steven Strew fight. And uh, that kick was awesome because Steven Struve had a crazy height on him and was able to kick him from really far away. Uh, Naganu, I think, has that lankiness as well. So, uh, you know, if, if he wants to bet on a big high kick, I mean, he's definitely going to cash in on it. But I think Stipe's boxing is going to be a lot for him. Uh, I think that you can switch stances and improvise so much there are going to be spots in which Steve Payne might be able to take advantage of. And if he's a little more defensive and maybe wrestles uh, Francis down, we haven't really seen him uh, much on the ground or, or, you know, crazy submission stuff. So we're going to see it. And he's definitely someone who can, if it does go to the ground, hold you close and, and keep you, you know, st uh, stuck there. He's super strong. This guy, everyone, every movement is, uh, is a lot of a lot of pressure going forward. World record puncher. Uh, I mean, if you're betting on, you know, who has the the bigger bomb, who has the uh, uh, the best artillery, it, it's definitely uh, Francis Ngannou. But in in terms of a um, bit more experience and uh, and maybe even uh, a bit more boxing, I think Stipe will be able to uh, to take on Naganu and we might even see Naganu go uh, longer than longer than the uh, two rounds. I think they, this could go four. You know, I, I think uh, Stipe is only hope is to get Francis tired and maybe expose some uh, some weaknesses there. Maybe while he's uh, working on uh, stepping in or switching stances or throwing those uh, those swinging punches, uh, you know, they might tax him in the later rounds. And uh, I think that's where Stipe could could win it. But it is a very close fight. And, uh, I mean, this is a great fight to bet on. So uh, I, I would pick Stipe. Yeah, and uh, I think Gib mentioned he was going to bet on Stipe as well. Plus 150 is not bad if you're betting on the champ. I see the value, but he's going to knock the fuck out. <laughs> I think that's what happens too. But for me, it's like in that Curtis Blades fight, you saw Curtis land a, a nice clean jab, and it, it looked to stun Ngannou. Like, it, yeah. it might have just thrown him off balance. I'm not ready to say he's got a weak chin or anything like that. But, like, I could see sh sharp punches down the pipe and a willingness to go yeah. into the pocket. You know, I could see Stipe landing shots and then taking over. So, it's yeah. like I get the offensive potential of Ngannou, and I think that's what happens, but – Man, you're you're trusting a guy who you've seen for four minutes in his last four fights, you know? Pretty mm -hmm. much. Pretty yeah. that much. Exactly. I've seen enough of him, though. The, the guy's a fucking monster, man. He is. He definitely is. Like and if I he's like, putting like people that. away that fast, especially the, like the Overeem was like the test for him. Overeem yes, was like yeah. the test. But Overeem, he, I think Overeem. Hell, even Andre could have been. 
Yeah, over in Munich, but their guys like, like I, I get, like they have no durability, so anyone's kind of gonna put them out. Stipe put both those guys out too, you know. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. But I don't like with Ngannou. It's like you might have maxed out durability. You might be Mark Hunt. If Ngannou lands, you might still go out. Like he, he could be that guy, you know. Bro, because when uh, do you think? Uh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say. If you think Francis Ngannou maybe had one more, like against uh, Dos Santos or something like that, do you think – or Fabrice over Doom, do you think that could kind of break the tie of, yeah, of but, like, experience? Like, again, it's guys – it's also guys who Stipe has knocked out already, and it's yeah. at the past generation of, of heavyweights, you know? So mm-hmm. it's, it's – I think it's just tough for a litmus test because, like, they've both beaten that older generation. They've both knocked out guys with durability issues, and now they're fighting each other. You got one guy with massive power and offensive potential who is actually well trained and, and good, you know. But you're training with Dewey Cooper as well, not to mention yeah. eh, since his last fight, yeah. who's legit, been around the game forever, yeah. right? But you, by the same token, you got Stipe. Like I could see Stipe just tucking his chin, going to work down the pipe, putting pressure. Maybe Ngannou's like, "Whoa, this guy doesn't respect my power." You know, how do I get him off me? All of a sudden, he's ate a couple shots. He got taken down. He's had to get up. It's round two. Could be tough, you know. Mm-hmm. But I could I see Ngannou landing and knocking him out? Absolutely. Yeah, I agree 100%, guys. And um, I guess that's it for the breakdown of UFC 220. Sweet. Drop, drop a nice like uh, below. And subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, shout out to all the viewers watching still. If you're still watching, I appreciate was... it truly. Yeah, N- so Nellis, Nellis is still watching for sure. That's my boy, Sandro Nellis. Sandro. And uh, if you're still watching, though, uh, everyone else uh, watching, just we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks and uh, go check out our interview with Eric Anders today that we shot. Uh, good interview before UFC Bellum, if you want to check that out. And, um, yeah, let's cash these motherfucking bets, guys. Let's get it. All right. Sweet.